So let's dig deep. You know, because I've been accused of not wanting people to see this. And we've already been through this, though. But memory loss has memory loss that dis disrupts daily loss may be a symptom of Alzheimer's or other dementia. Alzheimer's is a brain disease that causes a slow decline in memory. You know, like 10 years. Thinking and reasoning skills, all right? There are 10 warning signs of symptoms. If you notice any of them, don't ignore them. Schedule an appointment with your doctor. So, memory loss that disrupts daily life. Well, let's dig in. One of the most common signs of Alzheimer's disease, especially in the early stage, is forgetting recently learned information. Others include forgetting important dates or events, asking the same questions over and over, and increasingly needing to rely on memory aids, reminder notes, or electronic devices, or family members for things they, could, they use to handle on their own. None of this was happening in the judge, with the judge in the Darla case. None of this at this point was happening. None of this. There's no, <coughs> there's none of this happening. Some people living with changes in their memory due to Alzheimer's or other dementia may experience changes in their ability to develop and follow a plan and work with numbers. They may have trouble following a familiar recipe or keeping track of monthly bills. They may have difficulty concentrating and take much longer to do things as they did before. There's no evidence of this that went on during the trial. None. Show it. Show the evidence of it. Making occasional errors. There's none of that. None of that in, in the case. People living with memory changes from Alzheimer's they find it hard to complete daily tasks. Driving to a familiar location. or He had none of this during the trial. Confusion with time or place. None, there's no evidence of the judge having confusion with time or place during the trial. No, we don't see anything. New problems of words and speaking or writing. You see clearly that that judge can speak. Clearly during the trial. Losing things. The judge didn't lose anything in the case, did he? Did he do any of this? Poor judgment. Now, we have to understand. The judge didn't make any poor judgment decisions in this case. As a matter of fact, they tried to help. What about Helena's testimony? Go look. Anybody living with Alzheimer's and dementia may experience the changes of decision making. He wasn't making the decision on her death penalty. It wasn't him. It was, it was the 12 jurors, and none of them had dementia. Withdrawal from work or social activities. Well, that judge was there every day, wasn't he? Was there anything in his mood or his personality while he was up there seeing over that overseeing that case? Nope. Now, early detection. So. The judge may have been starting to see some type of issue, you know, going on with himself because our body, you know, we are our best doctors. Our bodies let us know when things are happening, right? So he may have been, he may have been in the stages of getting himself checked, but he had none of these, none of these that was obvious to the people in the courtroom, right? Now, if he was having a problem with the case or whatever or any of this and it was obvious, of course they would remove him. So let's talk about that. You show me, supporters, any of these that the judge did 
during the trial and let me know because the defense never said anything about his disease because they know better. He died 11 years after the case. He was diagnosed with it. I have to look that up, but it was many years after the case. He was he was diagnosed and then he died from it. So let me have your thoughts on that. Some supporters feel that because of this interaction here with Mad Dog Mulder and the court, the judge, some supporters feel like he had Alzheimer's at the time of the case, which he didn't. He wasn't diagnosed for 10 years after the case, and he actually died of uh, dementia. Uh, Motor asked, Now, Your Honor, will you require us to object in front of the jury? I will not. Because he didn't want to talk. I, I think that he, they were asking him about his his uh, any type of diagnosis he had. He was not diagnosed with Alzheimer's at that time. I can assure you of that. I am not that far gone yet. I may be up to Z in Alzheimer's, but I'm not that far gone. You will not object to this in front of the jury. court will admit the, the document and you will not have to object to the jury be, as being intent of the court to make this ruling. Now, su supporters might say, oh, well, that judge had Alzheimer's and that's what the, the case was all messed up because of him, right? But none of the jury had Alzheimer's. See, the jury made the decision and he did not have this at the time. Right? There was nothing the judge did in that case as a result of any type of medical problem he had. Remember, it was the jurors, the 12 jurors, who made the decision that she was guilty. The 12 jurors. And he was not officially diagnosed with this for 10 years after this case. Right, so I would ask the supporters to tell me what that judge did in the case that was a result of his Alzheimer's. If he had it, he didn't have it. He did not have Alzheimer's at the time. Do you think the state of Texas would let some uh, a judge that had a, 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 a ongoing Alzheimer's and was showing signs of it in that case would let him be there? No. But I'm going to look more into this. I, I, you know, like I said, I'll show you something here real quick. Now, it's frontal temporal dementia. 10, 11, 96, yeah, 11 years after the case. And it wasn't Alzheimer's. Now, a lot of people were saying that Judge Toll wanted to get that transferred over to Kerrville so he could go hunting. So he could go hunting. That that, that was his thing, is hunting. Right? But, you know, they the, it was the defense that wanted it moved. And that's not the case either. He, you know, they're trying to say he wanted it to go hunting, but that's not the case either. Well, you sure don't want to go to Galveston. See, even Doug Mulder is calling Darla Key a liar. And that's Darley's attorney.
Yeah, he still has no evidence of an intruder, but they're working on that, Cooper. Yeah, they have no problem. And and each juror is asked on in any state anywhere, one of the any death penalty case, each prospective jury do, doing at at the choosing of the jurors when they do that hearing, they are asked, "Do you have any problem giving the death penalty out if you find someone guilty?" And they have to say yes or no. And if they say no in a death penalty case, they're removed from the jury. So everybody that is a juror on a death penalty case in any state anywhere is asked that question before jury selection. Sanford did claim that he never saw the photographs, but Barb Davis proved him wrong when she said, oh yeah, those photographs did went, did go back, but they were cold and they were tired. You know, Sanford said that it was so cold in that court, it was cold as it was outside. And that, the you know, actually, I'll go up here and show you what Sanford said since we're here. It was cold. It was just as cold in that courtroom as it was outside. Sanford says the judge would let us get up and move around. So the judge with Alzheimer's that couldn't really think of anything, couldn't do anything, didn't even know his way to the stand, according to some supporters, he realized that the jurors were cold. And he had no problem with letting them warm up. That's a sure sign of somebody that's got Alzheimer's to me. When we got to the jury room, it was boom, guilty. It didn't take long. But actually, he's not telling the truth. Because the, 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 first, the first tally was four to eight. Four people in there believed that she was innocent at that time. So he's not telling the truth. And I will, I will let people know. Charles Sanford, after the, crime, after the court hearing, after Darley's Darl case, was convicted of being abusive to animals. Look it up. Mostly the women on the jury that were pushing for a guilty verdict. Yeah, because they weren't buying that. They weren't buying, the women weren't buying that you have to be, you know, you have to sleep away from your husband for a week down in the downstairs because your baby was moving in its crib and you couldn't sleep. But that a man can sneak in your house and you don't wake up when you hear your children being stabbed 10, 11, 12 times. You don't wake that, you know, that didn't wake you up. And the fact that she says that there was a man with, you know, she felt a pressure on her. And she saw a man leaving out of the kitchen. And Damon tapped her on the shoulder with mortal wounds, said, Mommy, Mommy. But she did not immediately holler for her husband until after that intruder was allegedly gone. You think about that. If I saw, if my wife was in one room and saw a man in our house, the first thing she would do is holler for me. I think most women would do that. They wouldn't wait until he conveniently left like Darley did. Well, there's your answer to that. The judge did not have Alzheimer's. He died in 2007. He did nothing in the case that was, uh, they didn't make any appeals on his decisions. They didn't make any appeals on his actions in the court. And the bottom line is the judge could have had every disease in the book. Because the people that were responsible for finding her guilty were the 12 jurors. And none of them had any medical issues. So, if these supporters could show me 
what this judge did in this case to cause a mistrial due to any type of mental illness, chemical illness. Show me what the judge did. Because you can't. Because he didn't have it. He may have been being treated for some stuff, but that doesn't disqualify you from, from the bar, the bench. I think some of these supporters that believe this have dementia themselves. <laughs>